Hey, welcome to Grow and We hope you're doing well today. What an exciting day we have, this gift of teaching. I'm excited about all of them. But this is one of my top gifts and service is second. And so I really have a passion for teaching the Word of God and getting into the Word of God. I want you to think about a teacher that had an impact on your life. There's some teachers around this area, around this church, that people that had these people, that they were their coach, they were their teacher, they were their mentor. So many people talk about them and they've been retired from teaching for 30 and 40 years. I want you to think about that person that's had an impact, that teacher. I've had some professors in college that were absolutely amazing. And you would sit there, and at the end of the class, you wouldn't get up. You know those teachers where you would just sit there and go, wow, I don't even want to move. I just cannot believe all that just happened. These are the type of guys that I sought to be like, so to speak. They made it simple. They made it where everybody could understand, but yet they dug into the truths of God's word. When people use their gift, they can use it for Bible schools or Sunday school classes or VBS, even college classes. They can go to uh, the, the, the local schools and teach there or seminaries or maybe it's a big group or a small group in your home. There is no doubt, nobody argues the fact, Romans chapter 12, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, says there is a gift and the teaching is a gift. It's not something that, uh, it's something that God gives you and then he continues to grow you in this gift. In fact, what is the gift of teaching really for? Well, Ephesians 4, 12 actually sums this up for us. He says it's three things, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let me explain something to you. He says, for the perfecting of the saints, meaning the furnishing of the saints. I want you to picture an empty house. And in that empty house, it's brand new, and you need to move in it. Well, obviously, you're going to need a couch. You're going to need a love seat, maybe a recliner. You're going to need a dishwasher, refrigerator, a bed, a dresser. You're going to need to furnish this house. He says, for those who are teachers, I want you to pretend everybody in front of you is an empty house and they are need in need of furniture. They are needing furnishing. And that's what a teacher does. They put in the, the principles and oracles of God into each person. And then it says, so that that person can go labor in the ministry of the word and continue in the local church so that the growth of the body of Christ can, can continue to grow. It starts with the teaching of the Word of God. Do you remember being in that mission conference, maybe that revival, Matthew 28, 19? You've probably already quoted it. Go ye therefore and what? Teach all nations. And so many times we see people talk about the word go, go. I mean, they even make big banners, go. And that's, the, that's where they try to put the emphasis. But absolutely not. That is not the emphasis in Matthew 28, 19. According to the original language, the word teach is the emphasis. It is the explanation mark in that verse. Go ye therefore and disciple the people because they need the teaching. This is the foundation. In fact, in Colossians 3.16, he says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another. Hebrews 5.12 Paul, whoever the writer is, nobody knows who the writer is. God does, but we don't. But in Hebrews 5, we see that there's an issue going on in this church. And Paul is addressing this, or whoever the writer is. He says, for when the time you should have been teaching, somebody is still having to teach you. Does that not sound a lot like the American church today? People that have claimed Christianity for 20 and 30 and 40 years and now they're still being taught the basic principles and oracles of God. And he says, and you are still in need of the milk. He said, get off the milk of the word and you need strong meat. But you can't handle it because of the shallow teaching, the shallow teachers. So what is the goal in teaching? You're there to furnish the house. And so here we have the apologetics is what we're to teach. Apologetics. Why do you believe what you believe? What do you know about your belief? Can you defend your faith? How about 
teaching doctrines. What do you know about Christology or Soteriology or Pneumatology? What do you know about theology or angelology? What do you know about theology? What do you know about the basic doctrines of the Word of God? What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? What does the Bible say about salvation? What does the Bible say about angels? What does the Bible say about Christ? Here's the sad thing, is that more people know more about sporting events and the batting average of Derek Jeter than they do about the one who saved them or they claim that they have a relationship with. In Ephesians chapter 4, he said this, that he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Teachers are growing people to grow. Christianity is a teaching religion. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy, all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind that ye may prove what is good and is acceptable. I want you to know that Christianity is not a feeling. Because if you base your Christianity off of a feeling, you're probably going to feel more unsaved than you are saved throughout your lifetime. John Scott said this, Experience without truth is the menace of a mindless Christianity. And I have seen this over and over, this mindless Christianity. People that are anti-intellectual has infected the church. The me generation comes to church to see, did it make me feel good? And if it made me feel good, I'll probably be back. If I'm not going to the lake that day. Or if I'm not you know, going to the golf course that day. Listen to this. Today's Christian often has zeal without knowledge. Faith without the facts. An emotion without understanding. And big programs, but very, very small doctrine. How many times have people got so excited and had a great big old meeting or revival tent meeting, or maybe they had this revival in their church and there has been zero growth, but they run up and down the aisles and they're shouting and all of this. But when they walk out, there's no change. If you look at some of the largest revivals in history, there was no running. There was no shouting. You know what it was? It was sobbing and repentance. Teaching in the New Testament was very important. The elders were required to teach. And then they were required to train younger men. And, the, and then he says the older women were to teach the younger women. The young men were to devote themselves to the teaching of the word of God and the preaching. The ability to teach is a mark of spiritual maturity. And by the way, there will be a stricter judgment for those who teach. You can use your gift with children, with teenagers, with singles, with young adults, older couples, one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, and big groups. But the important thing is this, is teachers, having the gift of teaching is extremely important. And to be used and to dig into the Word of God. Aren't you tired of the shallow teaching that's going on in our world today and has been for so long? And as a result, it has produced shallow Christianity. Let's begin to stir this gift up and those teachers get into the word and dig and then furnish those houses. God bless you.